More than 100 of Britain's biggest musical stars have signed a petition calling on the government to reach a deal with the EU over performing rights. During Brexit negotiations, the UK government apparently rejected an offer of visa-free tours by musicians to European Union countries. It means that artists must now apply for the right to perform when touring between the UK and Europe. Who better to speak to on this topic than the drummer in this track? Wicked little track, that one. Uh, Dave Rowntree uh, from Blur uh, joins us now on the programme. And hopefully, Dave, we can hear you a little bit better than the last time uh, you and I attempted to have a conversation. I'm sure we do. Good to see you this morning, Dave. Um, look, outline for us, if you can, exactly what the, the criticism is from, from musicians, band members like yourself, that there isn't, in a post-Brexit era, the kind of the unfettered travel that we were able to enjoy when we were part of the European Union. No, that's right. Though we were promised by the government, the music industry as a whole was promised that we would be replaced with something similar. Because it's absolutely essential that the musicians and the artists of all kinds are able to travel freely and to do shows of war. We're no longer living in a world where you can just make a living in the UK and support the kind of range and diversity of art that we have in this country. So we were promised this, and uh, to everyone's horror, when the deal was revealed, uh, it wasn't there. And there's been this ridiculous he said, she said going on about whose fault it is that it isn't there, which is spectacularly unhelpful. But I think what it does show is that there's clearly willingness on both sides to make something happen. Sure, so, sure Dave, just, just on that point, though. I, I... I can understand that from a musician's perspective, it perhaps doesn't matter who was, who was ultimately responsible for the situation that we find ourselves in. However, from, from the government's perspective, they said they, they, they had to throw this out because of visa, if visa-free short stays for, for, you know, visa-free short stays for all EU citizens would in essence have been the quid pro quo from the British government. Now, Brexit was all about taking back control, whether or not you agree with it, but unfettered access to the United Kingdom from, from any EU citizen but that wouldn't be tolerable in this, in this post-Brexit era. Well, that's not what we were asking for. We were, we were asking for, and we were promised, mm. uh, short stays with the uh, permission to perform across Europe. Now, what we have instead is 30 different regimes for 30 different countries. If you want to do a European tour, you have to you know, get visas and follow the requirements of each individual country. Obviously, for a band like Blur, we can deal with that, but... Mm -hmm. The, the problem is for the next generation of bands, the younger bands who are already living up hand to mouth, as we did when we were a young band. In that video that you saw, um, uh, that's unsustainable. So what we're, what we're looking at, if nothing is done, is the next generation of bands finding it's uneconomic uh, to, uh, to be performing and then have to do something else. Yeah. It's, it's crunch time, really. The government and we're aware of this all along. Everyone told them this all along, which is very necessary. You know, we did as much amount, same amount of lobbying as the shellfish industry, but we seem to have been as ignored as they have, uh, which, which is galling, really. But anyway, who cares who's in the right and who's in the wrong? Who cares who offered what? Everyone agrees that something needs to be done. So now it's time for them to do it. Okay, but Dave, Dave, how would you how would you how would you counter the criticism from amongst others? People like Roger Daltrey, you know, he's clearly not short short of a bob or two. But his point is, look, we were travelling to Europe before the European Union existed in, in this form. We were able to do it. If you want to head across the Atlantic and play in the United States, mm -hmm. you've certainly got to get a work visa to do that. I mean, what was your response? Well, Roger Daltrey's one of the signatories of the Letter of Time, so clearly he didn't have the problem but equally, you could say, you know, before electricity, we didn't have electric light bulbs. We don't need electricity. It was ridiculous. <laughs> argument. And going to America, you need one visa. To go to Europe, now you need 30 visas. So that's a clear, a complete difference. But actually, I'm telling you, it's much easier now to tour America than Europe. Uh, well, Dave, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you once again on the programme. Uh, Dave Roundtree, we'll let you get back to work. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, time for us to have a look at the weather. Look forward to brighter skies. The weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways.